Islamic law, Sharia, per Quran 929, the ninth surah or chapter, the 29th verse, mandates waging jihad war to submit Jews and Christians to humiliating status of religious discrimination and legal inequality if they do not accept the true faith, i.e. Islam. Fight against those who believe not in Allah nor in the last day, nor forbid that which has been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, Muhammad, and those who acknowledge not the religion of truth, Islam, among the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. But Islam also singles the Jews out uniquely for opprobrium, as is evident in the seventh verse of the Quran's first chapter called the Fatiha, or opening, which pious Muslims repeat 17 times daily. This verse refers to those who've incurred Allah's anger and both the tradition of Islam's prophet Muhammad himself and over 13 centuries of authoritative Quranic commentaries till now maintain this reference is to the Jews. Why have they engendered Allah's anger? Here is a 1940 summary rationale by the great scholar of Islam's anti-Jewish polemic Moshe Perlman from a chapter entitled Jews in the Quran and Traditions, which mirrors a 1966 work by Muhammad Sayyid Tantawi, modern Sunni Islam's greatest Quranic commentator and papal equivalent Grand Imam of Al-Azhar University, Sunni Islam's Vatican, from 1996 to 2010, also entitled Jews in the Quran and Traditions. Perlman from the Quran. The Jews transgressed Allah's commandments and flouted the prophets and even slew them, Quran 3.181. Therefore, many punishments fell upon them, 2.61. For example, some of them were turned into apes for desecrating the Sabbath. Quran 265, 7166, Quran 560 claims apes and pigs. The believers, Muslims, will find that they, the Jews, are the fiercest enemies. Quran 582, therefore, after they had rejected many friendly overtures, Quran 259 and 581, it was decided that they must be fought against, made tributaries, and compelled to pay the poll tax as a mark of their humiliation. That's Quran 929. In the traditions, they did not shrink from, pl from plotting, practicing sorcery, and poisoning, including Muhammad himself, until they were finally crushed and driven out of Arabia. The Jews extended their hatred of the Prophet to all Muslims. They became, in a way, the incarnation of evil. No wonder that when the world comes to an end, and when Dajjal, the Muslim Antichrist figure, threatens to destroy the, uh, those of the true faith, the Jews will be betrayed in their hiding places, even by the crying of the rock, here is a Jew behind me, kill him. The discrimination shared by Jews and Christians on deliber deliberately abasing Sharia mandates is what historian Batyur called dimitude, which derives from Quran 929's Dima Pact of Submission, which spared the lives of Jews and Christians who did not convert to Islam. She stated... For me, as a Jew, this insight into Christian dimitude represented an intellectual experience that was not easy to undertake. This was not the domineering face of European Christendom, persecuting and triumphant, but the discovery of its persecuted, humiliated, and suffering other side. In short, Eastern Christianity's dimitude under Islam is a, short of, is a sort of Jewish experience endured this time by Christians. What was that Jewish experience, passed as prologue, shaped by both the broader Islamic institution of dimitude and Islam's own unique canonical Islamic Jew hatred derived from the Quran itself, the traditions of Islam's prophet Muhammad, the Hadith, and the earliest pious Muslim biographies of Muhammad, or Sira. Mythically tolerant Muslim Spain, Andalusia, before the Reconquista, in fact the land of continuous jihad with strict application of the Sharia for both Christians and Jews, illustrates clearly the simultaneous Jewish experience of dimitude and theological Islamic Jew hatred. Moshe Perlman described how inflammatory rhetoric rooted in canonical Islam, including profuse usage of the Quranic epithet eight for Jews, declared, according to the Sira by Muhammad himself, before he slaughtered the surrendered males of the Medinan Jewish tribe Banu Qaraysa, and the notion Jews had breached the Quranic Dima pact of submission through their cunning precipitated the mass slaughter and destruction of the Jewish community in Grenada during a 1066 pogrom by rampaging Muslims. It is estimated that 4,000 Jews perished, annihilating the entire community, 
and making it the largest anti-Jewish pogrom till then in European histories. Eight decades later, the Jewish sage Maimonides barely survived the Berber Muslim Almohad jihad ravages of Spain and North Africa, which slaughtered tens of thousands, forcibly converted the Jewish survivors to Islam, and subjugated these forced Jewish converts to a Muslim inquisition, which lasted through the close of the 12th century. Maimonides, in his 1172 epistle to the Jews of Yemen, who wrote to the sage as they were suffering from a wave of anti-Jewish pogroms and forced conversions to Islam in, in Yemen, urged them to remain steadfast while lamenting the nation of Ishmael persecute us severely and devise ways to harm us and to debase us. None has matched it in debasing and humiliating us. Today, the grotesque myth of Islamic tolerance of Jews in particular persists even as we are in the midst of a global pandemic of Muslim anti-Semitism and anti-Jewish violence. This violent hatred is, is driven by the same unreformed and unrepentant canonical Islamic themes Perlman described in the 1940s, which date to the advent of Islam, as promulgated now by Islam's most authoritative religious teaching institutions, Sunni and Shiite alike. Analyses from the Anti-Defamation League, published between 2014 to November 21, 2019, which determined the prevalence, the occurrence of extreme anti-Semitism, i.e., agreement with at least six of 11 anti-Semitic stereotypes, have demonstrated the 16 most anti-Semitic countries in the world are all in the Muslim Middle East, where extreme anti-Semitism has a 74 to 93 percent prevalence. Extreme anti-Semitism is 50 to 55 percent prevalent among Western European Muslims, an approximately threefold rate of, of, of Western European uh, Christians or non-Muslims -Mus uh, overall, so threefold higher. Extreme anti-Semitism in the U.S., a much more philo-Semitic country, has a 34 percent prevalence among Mus Mus Muslims, 2.4-fold the 14 percent rate in non-Muslims. This excess of Muslim Jew hatred is accompanied not only by endless jihad violence against Israeli Jews, 450 to 500 thwarted attacks per year in 2018 and 2019, additionally thousands of rocket barrages, but three to tenfold increase rates of anti-Jewish violent or violent threats against Western European Jews by Muslims relative to violence from the left or right and 23 Muslim jihadist attacks against American Jews since 9-11, 16 of which were thwarted, thankfully, but seven that were completed, resulting in eight deaths and eight serious injuries, the most recent being Muslim convert Grafton Thomas's attack on a Muncie, New York synagogue, December 28, 2019, during a Hanukkah candle lighting ceremony. Current Al-Azhar uh, University grand imam and Sunni Muslim papal equivalent, Ahmed al tayeb during an October 2013 interview, reaffirmed authoritatively the canonical Islamic animus which fuels this global orgy of Muslim Jew hatred and violence. Riveting on Quran 582, al tayeb stated brazenly, a verse in the Quran explains the Muslims' relations with Jews. See how we suffer today from global Zionism and Judaism. Since the inception of Islam 1400 years ago, we have been suffering from Jewish and Zionist interference in Muslim affairs. The Quran 582 said it, and history has proven it, you will find the strongest among men in enmity to the believers to be the Jews. 850 years ago, Maimonides stated, with the understandable resignation of a subjugated Jewish dhimmi in Islamdom, we have done as our sages of blessed memory instructed us, bearing the lies and absurdities of Ishmael. We listen, but we remain silent. In spite of all this, we are not spared from the ferocity of their wickedness and their outbursts at any time. On the contrary, the more we suffer and choose to conciliate them, the more they choose to act belligerently toward us. It is unconscionable that today, due to sheer cowardice, Jewish and Christian leadership refuses to condemn the canonical Islamic Jew hatred procla proclaimed by Grand Imam al tayeb and thousands of lesser Muslim clerics worldwide.